Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor. Today's topic is basically sources of light. One of the more common one being candles, candle lanterns. Candle lanterns abound in considerable quantity. There, I probably have about a half a dozen different kinds myself. Many candle lanterns, you have to buy candles specifically for that lantern. Made of metal, but I think unjustifiably heavy for the condition. Uh, if you're trying to provide light for a lot of people because of your program, uh, usually you'll find clear plastic of various sorts. You'll find pop bottle plastic and the plastic that uh, the uh, uh, water uh, plastic kind of thin. They're very uh, uh, thin and melt and distort very readily. Here we have a more substantial plastic is probably uh, soap. And I've chosen to use the spout as the means to put the candle in. Very often you find the candle is a little loose, in which case you might have to use tape. Um, if you can put the candle in from the bottom, you can light it, shove it up here. If the candle's a little tight, you just take a saw and cut across there so that this will spread a little bit and then there it'll accommodate almost everything. And in that case, it actually grips the candle better. Uh, here I had a little bit where, where I actually used tape and I put it in. The candle lantern allows you to maintain a, a source of heat for melting the ends of rope and things of that nature. But generally at night it throws sufficient light that when you're walking in the forest that you will be able to see far enough ahead that you're not tripping uh, and, uh, uh, and you, you can see well enough to travel comfortably without any hazard. Now usually to carry the candle or to hang it you have a wire handle but you find that like all these other people here they don't produce a hook so that you can hook onto things. Uh, the wick was a little long on that one when it broke on me and so it'll take a short while for the Ah, oh, there, now finally the, the wax is starting to melt. The, this uh, is one candle power. I remember one time I was going home late at night and there were snowmobilers out in the winter and two miles away they saw this light wondering what it was at that odd time of the night on a pitch dark night and they came over and found me walking with a candle lantern. So the, uh, the lantern can be quite visible from a long distance. One of the plastics that doesn't distort very easily, but it is a bit opaque, it isn't crystal clear. You can read by this particular lantern that the ones from the um, ketchup, uh, Heinz ketchup has got one that will actually tolerate a terrific amount of direct flame when the, when the, uh, the candle uh, lantern tips over in its side and it tends to resist distortion. But the features that you can hang it Make sure you give enough distance that sometimes there will be enough heat to catch things on fire above, so you don't want to make it too short. And you might carry a form of a kit where here you've got the candles, and perhaps you should stuff a bag in there so when you convert this to a candle lantern you, you can pack your candles in, um, in the bag out of the way. The candles we're using here um, are steering candles, they're twice the price of the paraffin type candles. Ikea sells them. Now these are paraffin. When you hit them, there's a dull sound because the wax is softer. When you take steering candles, which are actually derived from beef fat, and you hit them, they ring actually. And that's one way you can tell a steering candle from all the others. Now that candle will tend to burn at least six hours. And when this candle burns, the heat that it evolves is about the same that you do, at 300 BTUs per hour. This is used uh, for warming a shelter when you don't have buddies to share and you're trying to keep yourself really light. You might choose to use the candles to supplement the clothing you're wearing in a super shelter by sleeping close to the roof. Now another source of light that we used to play around with a great deal which in a way is a bit fun, was the old carbide lamp, the old standby 
carbide lamps uh, were quite common with my generation about 40 years ago. But uh, I don't know if you can even find carbide anymore. It's a material that when you add water to it, acetylene gas is formed and you find that as it ages, it loses its oomph. So in here I've got extra flints and I would have enough carbide to last. I had to sew a little hood here because the shininess of your, of your reflector would get very dull and you learn how to strike the spark and, and capture the gas, strike the spark to light it. And you have to have a little device for clearing the orifice in there. But it's a kind of a, a interesting thing from bygone days. Even on automobiles they had uh, carbide lamps before the days of electricity. So you put your carbide, your water in here, your carbide is in this container and as the, uh, uh, the, the drip and the length of uh, flame is controlled by a little lever and so on and so on. Kind of a complicated means for providing a fairly strong light and of course it's got the device for hooking on the on your lamp and miners use this a great deal in their type of work as a means of, of producing a strong long-term dependable light cave explorers depended heavily on carbide lamps it's not exactly right but of course you don't have to uh, viciously twirl it as So that indicates that the wind is not going to blow your lantern out. And these tend to, just about any wind that you normally encounter in the, in the winter might not blow out the lantern. And if it does blow out, make your lantern so that it won't blow out. That is, make the opening up top a little narrower. And this is enough light. Uh, perhaps you can see 10 feet ahead of yourself. So when you're walking along in the dark and you're scared of, of tripping and all that sort of stuff, this makes a difference. There is significant heat, this 300 BTUs per hour uh, that is supposed to be the heat that you're producing as a total body uh, actually is, uh, is the, um, very detectable when you've got a candle going. Some candles have bigger wicks, more light and more heat, but this is the standard candle. One candle power. Okay, you can say something there. Yeah, here we have the lantern now. Uh, the way to test a lantern for its uh, windproofness is to twirl it. Whoops. <laughs> uh, Try that again. The, um, 